Hello, we are now in unit two of week three. And the focus for this week is writing acceptable units or topic learning outcome. In unit one, we have looked at how you can write the learning objective, which is the teacher centered. In unit two, we are now looking at how you're going to write acceptable unit or topic learning outcomes which is student-centered. I am Professor Inegbedion Juliet Owajaji. Now, let's start. What is our learning outcome? By the end of this unit, you will be able to write measurable learning outcome. Now, let us look at how we can write measurable learning outcome. Learning outcomes are written in specific and measurable terms. There are three major components in writing learning outcomes. First, the expected behavior or skills to be performed must be there. Secondly, we have to see the condition under which the learner will demonstrate knowledge or perform the skill. And the third part is that the criteria to measure the performance must be clearly stated. Now let's look at the first part, the expected behavior or skill. There must be an action verb in this component. It is the action verb that will help to describe the expected behavior or the skill. And again, remember we have three domains that will come in here. You have the cognitive domain, you have the affective domain and you have the psychomotor domain. So at one point or the other, you must recognize the domain you want to check, you want to uh, carry out activity on. So, and that domain will determine the type of verb you're going to use, action verb. And you may go to a last week video to look at the suggested action verb for each domain but you have to avoid the use of generic verbs, such as understand, no, you cannot measure no, you cannot measure understand, because you cannot measure the level, the extent of which that person has understood this. So let's look at an example. Example of this is describe the type of educational data. The word describe is an action verb because a doing verb which is telling you what to do describe now let's look at the second one the condition under which the learner will demonstrate or perform the skill in addition to the action verb you must state the condition or conditions under which the learner will demonstrate the knowledge all these kids. Let's look at an example here. We could say, by the end of this unit, you will be able to describe two major types of educational data. Describe, action verb, two major types. Two, in all this instance, not just describe types of educational data, but you are specific to major types. So in looking at it, the condition is that it must be two major types where you want to work with it. And again, we look at the third one, which is the criteria that you're going to use to measure the performance. And we need to let the learners know how their success will be measured. Example, by the end of this unit, you will be able to describe two major types of educational data with 80% proficiency in the description. Now you are bringing in the active verb, you are bringing in the condition, and you are saying the proficiency level required is 80%, which means if you do not describe it up to that level, then the person has not met the demand. Or you could say, by the end of this unit, 
you will be able to type 60 words per minute using personal computer in Microsoft Word with 100% accuracy. In this case, what you are expecting from these students is that they will type 60 words per minute without error, accuracy. We are looking at how accurate it is. And what is it going to use? It's not the typewriter, but you are saying personal computer. And it will have to be Microsoft Word, not any other Word, not WordPad or any other Word. So these are given condition. And the criteria for measurement is that it must be 100% accurate. So if it is not 100%, it is not met. Why do we need all this? You discover that when you have a well-defined learning outcome, a direct body teacher and the learner, the learner will know what to look out for while reading, while studying, and the teacher or the student knows what to look out for too while guiding the student. Again, you discover that you depend on the learning outcome for every other thing that has to do with the process of that learning, including the assessment, because it's from the learning outcome you are going to draw out the test items that you're going to use. So if the learning outcomes are not properly defined, definitely it will affect the learning process of that particular learning that the students will be undergoing. So it is very important for us to note on some of the things we need to know when we are to write learning outcomes. What are those things we need to take cognizance of? One, use action verbs that meet the taxonomy of learning you want to achieve. Remember, we have three taxonomy of learning again, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Secondly, there should be a clear indicator or a clear indication of what the learners will learn from the knowledge presented to them. A well-stated learning outcome will bring out a clear indication of what the learner will learn. Thirdly, the expected level of learning should be shown because you are expecting them to learn to a particular level and that should show and must be commensurate to the level of the learners. For example, you can have a creating verb to tell someone who is in the primary section, and you could still have creating word that you can use to tell someone who is at the master's level. But you discover that the level of difficulty will not be the same. So we need to know the level of learning that you are testing. Then the last, which is the fourth part, the stated learning outcome must not be too many. You know, if you know that if you use identify, after identify, describe, and you still have to have a high level, you can set a high level to remove the unwieldy. For example, if I tell me to evaluate, if you are evaluating a process, there is no way that you can evaluate where you cannot identify, where you cannot describe that particular process, you can't evaluate it. So when you set high level uh, learning outcomes, it helps you to reduce the total number of learning outcomes you are setting to a more manageable form. And what we are suggesting is maybe between four to six, no more than that, maximum. You could have two, you could have one, three, fine. So it is being advised that you set more high level learning outcomes that can take care of the lower learning outcomes instead of coming up with unwieldy, the manageable learning outcomes. So if that is noted, we have a little task here. Let's look at this task. The topic is sources of educational data. Now, for this task, you are to uh, derive two learning outcomes for the above topic. And you are to identify the verb, the condition, and the criteria for measurement. 
you have the topic sources of educational data so let me give you some time to come up with your learning outcomes Okay, welcome back. That is great. So let's see. Probably, let's look at what I have here. You can compare it with your own. By the end of this topic, you will be able to collect educational data for primary school planning from five educational sources of data. Collect educational data for primary school planning from five educational sources of data. With this, my own action verb is collect. And the condition is that it has to be for primary school planning. That is to say, you can have data Yes, the educational data, but they are not meant for primary school plan. If I have to go and be looking for the number of beds, the number of deaths between ages zero to six years old, I will not need that data to plan for tertiary education or secondary education. I will need that data to plan for primary education and to know the number of Student that will, children that will be qualified to come into primary one because primary one is the uh, sorry uh, the A six is our official age in starting primary school in many countries including Nigeria. So if age six is the official age and I'm interested in the birth rates, the death rates of the children between zero to six then I will use such data for higher institution. Again, here, what is the criteria for measurement? The criteria is that, yes, you have used the verb, you have stated the condition, but these sources must come from five educational sources of data. So if you have come up with it and they are not within the five educational sources of data, it means it will not be considered. The second uh, example I have here, because we are told to stay to examine the sources of educational data in terms of relevance and adequacy to check attrition rates in open and distance university education. In this case, the active verb is examine. And the condition is that the sources of data in terms of relevance and adequacy. So the relevance and adequacy is the condition. And here, how will you check and how was the measurement you to check attrition rates in open and distance learning education? So if it is not within open and distance learning, definitely you will not get it. So you discover this is the way we define our learning outcomes. I know in most cases, we easily meet with the verb and the condition. The criteria is seldom met in most cases. But we must try to do all the three together. That is what makes a good and well-stated learning outcome. So in conclusion, in writing learning outcome or outcomes, indicates the actual verb, the condition, and the criteria for measurement. When you do this, then you are good to go and continue with your course design. And remember, learning outcome is very important when you are setting or designing your course. It is very, very important. Without the learning objective, you may not be able to pilot the process the way it is. With this, I say thank you for listening and keep working 
all your assignments.